At this point, I think it's safe to say that 2023 has really been one of the best recent years in video games. From the Resident Evil 4 remake, to Tears of the Kingdom, to Baldur's Gate 3, your old pal Falcon is a pretty happy game bird. But that isn't to say that with the large number of games coming out daily, there are not stinkers. In fact, there are stinkers. Right now, the worst rated game on Metacritic for 2023 is Lord of the Rings Gollum, which was right fully panned because it is awful, but I think it's got a real contender with Skull Island Rise of Kong. This game is not worth playing. It is a $40 game, which is at least not a $70 game, but it's a $40 game, and it has an insultingly bad bit of DLC to unlock. Um, that includes eight exclusive film grains, which, wow, gotta have that. And for that and some other crap that is equally worthless, it only costs you an additional 15 bucks, making it so the total amount you can spend on Skull Island Rise of Kong currently uh, without purchasing it on multiple platforms anyway, which I don't know why you would ever do, is $55. Uh, we're starting this one off on a pretty bad foot, honestly. The mostly negative user rating didn't exactly fill me with hope, though. But even expecting the worst from these types of licensed movie tie-in games, whatever you want to call this type of game, this one still disappoints. It really reminds me of the age of the random shitty studio that exploits its employees to shovel out some terrible Wii game era. I actually have a friend that worked at one of those studios that put out several licensed movie games for the Wii and fairly regularly employees were not paid on time. This reeks of that. It's cheap, undercooked, and it sucks. Like, even with rock bottom expectations and the understanding that this is just licensed shovelware, it still managed to surprise me how undercooked it felt. Like, look at this opening cutscene. It is pathetic. Yeah, I'm used to seeing a slideshow start these things off, but these are barely even drawings. It looks like this was cranked out in like 10 minutes in Photoshop. And that's how you choose to open the, like first impressions are important, right? But don't judge a book by its cover. Give it at least a little time to show you what it is. Oh, it's not, it doesn't get better. It dumps you awkwardly into the gameplay in a way that really, it feels like a proof of concept. But this is a game. This is a $40 game. Now, funny enough, the actual act of playing the game isn't terrible. It's playable. It's not responsive or actually fun, but it, it generally works. But what we're looking at here is an extremely unambitious brawler. You have a standard attack combo, a special, you can jump and run and charge, and there's some rudimentary stuff where you get a taste of the power. Um, and this is kind of a game trope thing that is somewhere in line with the freeze frame with the record scratch that goes, that's me. I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. The video game equivalent is the tutorial where you have all these crazy crazy powers and you're super powered and then the tutorial ends and you don't have those powers until you earn them because it's a flashback or a different character or something. In this case, you're a different character. During the tutorial, you're the mom gorilla. There's a, a, a crappy boss fight at the end of the tutorial that kills both the dad Kong and the mom Kong and that uh, triggers the generational transfer of power and makes you King Kong, I guess. But uh, I'll say this, that prologue there, that's, that's the whole game. You've already experienced the whole game. And now you experience the game with less moves. You wander around these indistinct jungle environments, beat up little dinosaurs, I guess. I think they're that. They're eventually more obviously dinosaurs, but uh, you're gonna get confused and lost a lot. But besides confused and lost, there's another emotion you're going to feel in, and it's bored. You're gonna feel bored a lot. It's really basic gameplay, and the tutorial is powered up top of the line Kong. 
it's not that good and then all of everything that's good about it gets taken away for a long time and i guess like the gameplay kind of makes sense for a, a linear beat-em-up game where with good level design that sends you in a direction to destroy a bunch of things could be fun could i'm not saying it would i'm not saying that's the only problem here but if that were the focus it would have made some sense that is not the focus because there are five levels in this game they are massive sprawling mazes that i don't understand how the hell you're supposed to navigate uh particularly given that when you open up the map you are not told where you are or which direction you are facing on the map it's just a map now i know there's been some complaints about mini maps lately but this is the case forum it's right here of course with good level design you could potentially not need a map at any point but yeah the map is as low effort slap together crap as everything else is a and sometimes you're not gonna know whether you're doing what you're supposed to be doing or literally sequence breaking like what you would do to intentionally speed run this game feels exactly the same as playing the game normally which what and you know what you're gonna end up doing a lot of backtracking by mistake which is not my favorite thing uh, like i cannot describe just how miserable these levels are exploring them is so bad tedious is too specific i mean it is tedious but it's bad in a lot of ways now remember i said that the game is playable but that doesn't mean it's fun combat is not fun there's no power to anything you do and you're mostly stuck just slapping around these like tiny chickens and stuff there is like something where it's clear that they wanted to try to break things up they added this charge move that also works like a parry it could potentially be interesting but it is in practice just awkward it's primarily meant for offense but even if you're locked onto an enemy which is by the way something that triggers this weird fisheye lens effect that makes it much harder to see anything that's going on like you're locked on you're doing this goofy locked on thing and the move doesn't go in the locked on direction it goes in whatever direction you're facing which what the hell what is that that is the wrong way to do that dude just don't include it like the one way to charge is to carefully position yourself so that you actually go in the direction you want and you know what why would i do that i'm not bothering with that forget that it doesn't take long to realize that most combat encounters are also completely worthless you only unlock skill points which believe it or not have their own bizarre problems uh, and you have these ascension events dotted across the map they lock you into an area and force you to fight a bunch of enemies or do some dumb task they're not fun but they are the only combat sections that are required which i guess eh, you can run past every other enemy in the game and if for whatever reason you play the game i would say do it they barely try to keep up with you and there's nothing stopping you from just running past them i i did mention some skills there you get them from beating bosses that unlocks them and they're just the powers that were there in the tutorial and it drip feeds them to you over the course of the game each skill has its own tree pretty standard but the confusing thing is that to unlock even your first skill you need five skill points you want to know how many you get for completing an event one a skill point the logical thing to do would be to tutorialize the player on unlocking skills after the first point but this game plays by its own rules and that is to say it knows that telling you how to do things would make it so that the game itself is shorter and i guess that they understand that five levels is not enough although i think i did have enough i don't know point is if you want an upgrade you really you gotta work for it asshole i don't really know why the game decided to be so stingy here uh it's it's easy and forgiving in basically every other way around just about any place where there are enemies there are these laughable spinning healing plants they're the only power up in the game and they could have just easily had them appear on the ground like most games with healing plants but for some reason they're spinning pickups uh even though they look like plants there's nothing stylized about them they might as well be a coin from mario that's what their pickup style is speaking of plants um is kong supposed to be big i can't tell i cannot tell if he's supposed to be a big old king kong monster or if he's a gorilla and that's it 
everything looks normal sized. Uh, the huge open environments and details kind of suggest you're normal sized, but there's not really enough detail to really glean a lot from it. The enemies could be normal sized. I don't know. There's nothing that really signals they're especially big, but hey, look at these tiny palm trees though. Kong's standing next to them, uh, so Kong is big. Very big, bigger than a tree, right? Or is that a flower? I don't know. Hey, look at these tiny little ruins Kong is bigger than. So I guess he is big. But why are these trees so big? These trees look like tree trees. Like if I was a regular gorilla. And you know what? Uh, eh? I think he's supposed to be big, but I, uh, there's a lack of consistency whether or not the environment signals that. I mean, yeah, Kong himself looks cheap and bad, but uh, he probably looks less rough than the levels. Like, look at this. There's blurry, stretched out textures. There's messed up geometry. The levels really look like Unity Store assets piled on top of each other without rhyme or reason. It's a chaotic mess. And, uh, you know, once you realize fighting enemies is most Mostly pointless that's the chaotic mess that is most of the game also the music good god it is some of the most generic mellow jungle music you could possibly find seriously i do not know whether this came from a library or if they paid somebody a very low dollar amount on fiverr to make this stuff but it seems designed to put you to sleep and it doesn't stop seems like the same basic track droning on the whole time doesn't matter uh whether it's a quote quote unquote epic combat encounter or not uh the sub to rock the dinosaur hunter track keeps going uh while you're wandering around five of the most boring levels you have ever seen in a game period and while we're talking about the audio can we just say that everything sounds like they're trying to fit it on a friggin nintendo 64 cartridge i mean anybody who's ever played resident evil 2 on a nintendo 64 knows exactly what the audio in this game sounds like listen to that narrator that's like 12 kbps mp3 right there however the stories of this age old island and you know i would say this game is short but it's like five hours long hour level five levels feels way too long though you've a hundred percent seen everything the game has to offer in the tutorial there are a few new enemies eventually some bosses uh but it is it's not worth that effort it's certainly not worth 40 dollars it's so boring it's one of the cheapest dullest games i've ever played it really comes off the same as like those bad tiger call of the wildy i don't remember if that's the name of it it reminds me of that kind of a game except for it, it, it works instead of doesn't work like that's kind of the prime distinction here and that's that's not enough not for forty dollars like congrats you made your cheap asset flip game so that it doesn't crash all the time and you don't fall through geometry consistently yay that's the positives i can give here though um aside from the fact that some of these animations in the post tutorial cutscene when uh, <laughs> i mean these kong faces are fun these if these these aren't memes. I don't know what memes are anymore. I'll say I'm not 100% ready to call this the worst game of 2023, but it definitely rivals Gollum. The reason I think it's such a problem is that this is like a $3 game sold it for $40. And at a $3 price tag, it would definitely delegitimize the company that made it. Not necessarily to gamers, because the game also does that, but like to business people. I don't really know what the story behind here is, but clearly the point was to make some money off the Kong license, and they probably have. I, I find it very difficult to imagine the budget for this is very high, and it's 40 bucks. That's lower than a AAA price, so somebody's probably going, oh, a Kong game for 40 bucks? Okay, I'll try it. And that's like pure profit, because there's no way they spent a lot on this one. Like, Lord of the Rings Gollum sucks, but... <sighs> There's more effort in that game. Like they clearly spent some money. There's some recognizable environments. There's some personality in the character. There's stuff that you want to like about it, but just can't because the game's bad. There's nothing to even really want to like here. Like obviously we have to consider the fact that there are worse games, but they don't have a license attached to them that makes it likely people will buy a $40 game just to try it. And that's exactly what we're looking at here. Huge waste of money. 
Terrible. Terrible. What do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.